What's going on my fellow rock and rollers? Don't forget to hit the bell notification icon to be notified every time I put out a new video on my channel. Hailing from New York City in the early 80s, Sonic Youth was part of the experimental no-wave art and music scene before changing into a more conventional rock band and becoming prominent members of the American noise rock scene. Author David Brown best described the no-wave scene as a time when, and I quote, art, music, illustration, all were in the process of being torn down, reassembled, and combined with other media. Sonic Youth's classic lineup was made up of vocalist and guitarist Kim Gordon, Thurston Moore, bassist Lee Ronaldo, and drummer Steve Shelley, and they were credited with doing things with guitar that hadn't really been done before. That included creating sounds with strangely tuned guitars, using feedback, and placing objects on or between the strings, such as drumsticks and power drills. Author Michael Azarad, who has written extensively about America's indie underground rock scene, said the following of Sonic Youth's sound. Sonic Youth could only afford cheap guitars, and cheap guitars sounded like cheap guitars. But with weird tunings or something jammed under a particular fret, those humble instruments could sound rather amazing. Bang a drumstick on a cheap Japanese Stratocaster copy in the right tuning, crank the amplifier to within an inch of its life, and it will sound like church bells, he'd say. And Sonic Youth would be a huge influence on the alternative rock acts who followed in their footsteps, most notably Nirvana, who claimed even after the release of their Juggernaut album Nevermind, that they wanted to be like Sonic Youth. The band would be one of the most popular yet staunchly independent bands throughout the 80s in the United States. They spent a good chunk of the decade releasing albums on indie labels with their streak ending after the release of 1988's Daydream Nation. The album received universal acclaim from critics, but it was met with modest sales. And the band was disappointed with how their record label Enigma was treating them. The label was suffering from distribution and financial issues, so Sonic Youth would leave them the following year and sign with DGC Records, which was owned by Geffen. Their first release with Geffen would be 1990's Goo, and it would be the biggest album of their career up until that point. The record would net the band their first appearance on the Billboard 200 charts, with it selling over 100,000 units, and yielded the hit song Cool Thing. The album also proved that Sonic Youth didn't have to sacrifice their experimental sound, while at the same time being radio friendly. The band's follow-up album Dirty, released in 1992, was put out during the height of grunge's popularity. The band would work with Nirvana producer Butch Vig and mixer Andy Wallace, both of whom wanted to condense down the band's songs and focus heavily on the guitar sounds. And due to Nirvana's success with Nevermind, Geffen Records heavily promoted the album and it would chart within the top 100 albums in the US and go gold selling over half a million units. The band would once again work with producer Butch Vig on their follow-up album 1994's Experimental Jet Set, Trash and No Star. The album would prove to be one of the band's highest charting records of their career, peaking in the top 40 in America. But the record was more subdued and quieter, featuring some throwbacks to their indie label days. The same year Kim Gordon and Thurston Moore welcomed their first child, and the tour to support the album wasn't as strenuous as their previous records due to Gordon's pregnancy. And by 1995 the band would headline Lollapalooza, and following that appearance the band took some time apart while its members pursued other musical projects. And between 1995 and 2007 the band would release a series of albums for Geffen Records, while also starting to release more experimental and instrumental records under their own label. The band would release their first and final album on Matador Records in 2009 titled The Eternal, and two years later the band would announce their breakup in October of 2011, shocking their fans. Kim Gordon and Thurston Moore would announce in a band statement that the pair had separated after 27 years of marriage. The band still had dates though in South America planned later in the year, which they were still committed to playing, with their final show taking place on November 14, 2011 at the SW Music and Arts Festival in Brazil. The week following the performance, bassist Lee Ronaldo would state in an interview that Sonic Youth would be, and I quote, ending for a while. The band's label, Matador, explained that plans for the band remained uncertain, despite previously hinting that they would record new material later in the year. Kim Gordon recalled the band's last show together, saying in her 2015 memoir, Girl in a Band, 
When we came on stage for our last show, the night was all about the boys. Thurston double slapped our bass guitarist on the shoulder and loped across the stage, followed by Lee Ronaldo, our guitarist, and then Steve Shelley, our drummer. I found that gesture so phony, so childish, such a fantasy. Thurston has many acquaintances, but with the few male friends he had, he never spoke of anything personal and he's never been the shoulder slapping type. It was a gesture that called out, I'm back, I'm free, I'm solo. And Thurston and I exchanged maybe 15 words all week. After 27 years of marriage, things had fallen apart between us, she'd say. So you may be wondering, why did their marriage fall apart? Well, it'll come out that Moore cheated on his wife with a woman named Eva Prince, who was a book editor that he had worked with for years. He would end up moving to London with her. And Gordon was candid about the affair in her 2015 memoir, saying, in slow motion, a pattern of lies, ultimatums, and phony promises, followed by emails and texts that almost felt designed to be stumbled upon, so as to force me to make a decision that he was too much of a coward to face. I was furious. It wasn't just the responsibility he was refusing to take, it was the person he had turned me into, his mother. What made things worse is that Kim Gordon knew Eva, and as someone being as blunt as she was, she even discussed her in interviews, telling Billboard magazine, Frankly, I was quite restrained and undetailed referring to her book. I just hit a nerve because the woman Thurston's with is toxic borderline. To have that out in the world as a role model, it's effed up. I didn't just hate her. If you met her, you would understand, she'd say. And Moore would talk to Collide magazine where he defended himself, claiming that despite the disillusion of his marriage, he didn't want Sonic Youth to end, saying, I find it really strange that I got demonized for the breakup of Sonic Youth. When I myself had no intention of breaking up the band, that was a real surprise to me, he'd say. He would also be candid about his shortcomings as a person in a 2014 interview with The Fly, claiming that his marriage, and I quote, ended in a kind of normal way, midlife crisis, starstruck woman. He would go on to say, I'll always have that experience of sadness that a separation brings, especially one that was as important not just to me, but to everybody around us. There have been some fallouts, but that's to be expected. It's pretty heavy. I've had some life issues. In your 40s and 50s, things can change in ways that upset the order of things that have been established. Over 25 years plus of marriage, it's really distressing. You have to work through it. It's very personal. I don't really talk about it much, he'd say. It's been nine years since the band broke up and its members have pursued other musical projects. But what have the band members said about a possible reunion? Well, it seems unlikely anything will happen, as Gordon's 2015 memoir states several times that the band is done for good, and in 2013, Ronaldo would state that people should just let the band rest in peace. And despite the ugly nature of their breakup, the band's business relationship still seems to be working, as they have put up many live releases and new merchandise. So that does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like button and subscribe, and we'll see you again tomorrow on Rock and Roll True Stories. Take care.